Meanwhile, I'm asking you about and thinking about something else which might have been on your mind. What sort of advice might you have given your younger self? Now, even just uh, throwing that out there has produced some interesting responses. Uh, this one says, um, advice, never question your ability. You can do it and embrace your height. Interesting thoughts. But what advice would you give your younger self? Well, there's some uh, research which has been done, which looks into uh, the impact of this on younger people. And joining me now is Dominic Arnold, who's the CEO of the LGBTQ plus young people's charity, Just Like Us. Joins me now. Dominic, good morning to you. Good morning. How are you? Yeah, very good. Thanks. And thanks for joining us here on Talk Radio. So uh, tell me about the research. Why did you conduct it? So we did a piece of research. One of the things we wanted to find out um, is, firstly, as an LGBT charity working in education, obviously, we're very interested on the impact of education on LGBT young people. Um, so we conducted the research looking at what advice would you give your younger self? Uh, and the results were pretty stark, actually. We found that non-LGBT young people were most likely to give advice around career, around goals, around exams. And LGBT young people were most likely to give advice basically about just getting through the day. So about bullying, about being harassed and being picked on. And this is, this is a sort of fascinating insight, isn't it, really? Which is, um, I suppose different things impact different people in different ways. So, for example, mm. you will often look at other people and they will probably not have the same problems as you, uh, yeah. but they will have problems. So mm. re regardless of whatever your situation, I suppose what this begins to flush out is that all of us have to think about the things that um, perhaps we would advise ourselves. But then how important is it? Um, that we think that we live in a society that is uh, tolerant and diverse and all that sort of business. It would appear as if it's not. I, th I think you've hit the nail on the head there. And, and I think what we've got to remember is over the last 30 years, particularly LGBT people, it feels like things have come on leaps and bounds. And I think in some cases they have. Um, but what this really shows is that actually that work, um, mostly if you look at the things that have, that have come into place, so we've got equal marriage, the ability to serve in the armed forces, the ability to adopt, age of consent, all this sort of stuff. But it actually affects adults rather than young people. And in some cases, schools haven't changed as much as we think they have. Do you think, though, this is ever going to be dealt with um, in a way that... Uh, I suppose, look, if you've got two parents uh, and the two parents are predominantly uh, mm. one male, one female, and, and they yeah. may or may not be together, then inevitably, as a child, if you're growing up and you are um, uh, LGBTQ plus in any shape or form, uh, mm. then you are not going to be like them. And that makes yes. it one of the most difficult things that regardless of how tolerant everybody is, you are still in your mind going to be different because you're different from your parents and you're different from those around you. I think you're absolutely right. What it, what we have seen, though, is in the schools we work in, so uh, the schools just like us working across the UK, um, we found that the schools really can make a difference to things like bullying, to things like language, uh, and to things like how they themselves look at LGBT people as an institution. Um, there are many schools that don't mention LGBT people at all from the, from the day that students arrive to the day they leave. And we know that for LGBT young people, seeing examples of who they could be is incredible helpful. What are we going to do, though, about the situation that there are many parents, uh, for whatever reason, it might be religious, it might be cultural, mm. that do not want their children to have the teaching that we need to have if mm. we're going to see this kind of stigma removed? So I think from my point of view, firstly, I do believe we should be sensitive to all kinds of parents and all kinds of beliefs, because that diversity is what's really, really important to us in the UK. Um, but that diversity does include LGBT people. And we know that simply pretending LGBT people don't exist, which is what many of us have been doing for years and years, just simply doesn't work. Um, so I would say that we need to include LGBT diversity within the rich spectrum of diversity that we are so used to talking about in the UK. And make sure that that feeds through to our schools um christmas is often a time at which uh, families come together maybe not quite so much this year uh, but certainly um a, a lot of people perhaps need to have those conversations and be more uh, wary if you like and, mm. and, and unaware of what's going on if people want to find out more about uh, your charity just like us where do they go well, if they'd like to come over to our website, we're at www.justlikeus.org and get involved in our latest campaign, uh, Younger Me, to flood the internet with wonderful images and supportive messages for LGBT young people. Thank you very much indeed uh, for joining us this morning. That's Dominic Arnold, CEO of the LGBTQ Plus Young People's Charity, Just Like People's Charity, Just Like People's Charity, Just Like.
like people's charity. Just